Hello and welcome to Donaldson Clean Solutions uh, Diesel Fuel Kit Selection and Installation Advice, webinar number 24. The objectives for today are to look at what to consider when selecting a diesel fuel kit, getting the most out of your kit by getting it installed correctly, and how to prepare your, your fuel handling system and your or site to put it all together and have, have the best possible operation. Diesel fuel kit selection decisions can be made uh, following the following chart. Considerations are uh, volume of fuel stored, whether you're using gravity uh, to feed your, your fuel to equipment or, or mobile tanks, uh, breathers for tanks, filter carts for cleaning up tanks or transferring and filtering and cleaning fuel, and some choices on uh, winter fuel uh, filtration options once you have a system installed and, and need to filter fuel year-round in cold environments. Here's an image of the, of the four different common kits that we sell. We sell a compact kit for small applications and tight installation locations. A standard kit is a standard particle removal kit there down in the bottom left. Upper right is the high capacity kit. It handles higher flow rate, but more importantly, it handles higher capacity doing filtration on the dispenser side of a system. And lastly, we have a clean and dry kit for situations where you believe you may have an ongoing water issue in addition to wanting to get uh, clean fuel with particulate removal. So we do particulate removal followed by a water absorber and we have a, a trap breather that keeps particulate and condensation from occurring in the tank. Uh, some examples of the types of tanks we're talking here. This is a 500 gallon uh, bulk diesel tank, pretty common in uh, light duty and medium duty uh, diesel fuel consumption situations. Here's a little bit larger system. It's uh, still a fairly low 10 gallon a minute dispense flow rate, but it's a little bit larger tank, so say a few thousand gallons horizontal uh, storage there. Um, something to touch right away on, on small uh, diesel applications is, is gravity filtration. Gravity filtration has been around for a long time and it poses a challenge for people operating modern high pressure common rail equipped uh, equipment. The fuel filtration required for these modern engines is significantly tighter than can be done in a gravity situation. You only have a couple of pounds of pressure to push fluid through a filter and you'll get very short filter life if you do significant levels of filtration there. You can see on both of these systems there are, is a filter in place. Those are typically a screen or perhaps a, a water separator. Both of those are very coarse filtration. The type of particulate in fuel is very, very small and it will typically go right through these filters. Those you can tell by the way they look, they've been installed for a very long time and no one has serviced them. Lots of fuel has passed through them, but they have not plugged, which means the filter isn't collecting very much. And we need to do significant cleaning of fuel to protect and, and guarantee long operation of onboard fuel filters on modern high pressure common rail equipped equip, uh, engines. To give you an idea of what's inside a tank, like those stationary tanks we just saw, You'll have uh, the tank is designed to use gravity to help as part of the filtration system. And you can see here, this is diesel fuel sitting over the top of a little bit of dirt and a little bit of water in the bottom of this uh, simulated tank. It's just a glass jar, but uh, gives you the idea that the water and the dirt settle to the bottom and the fuel sits on top. And fuel is typically drawn from a, a few inches up off the bottom to avoid that stuff that has settled to the bottom there. That's the way tanks have been designed for the last hundred years. The dirt and the water settle and the fuel gets decanted off the top and the problem basically avoids the pump and it doesn't get, for the most part, passed downstream. In modern uh, uh, situations, fuel has changed. Water uh, there now helps contribute to the oxidation and, and microbial growth in the fuel and it starts to cause degradation of the fuel and create solids that can plug filtration. So 
it's best if you're going to look to install filtration and you're already having operability issues to clean out your fuel infrastructure. This is an image of the inside of a fuel tank that hadn't been cleaned in some time. There was dirt and water in the bottom of the tank and you can see all that material there on the bottom of the tank is actually microbial growth. Um, microbes grow in fuel only if there is water present and that generally occurs right where the stuff has settled to the bottom and is in contact with the fuel that's sitting above it. And they grow there, they oxidize the fuel, they actually eat the, and consume the fuel, and they create solids. And if the pump starts picking that up, it'll just plug the filters on the dispenser side or go right into the equipment and plug the filters on the piece of equipment. So the idea is if you're going to implement filtration and you don't remember the last time you cleaned that tank out or never have, uh, it's much better to hire a tank cleaning service to really clean that tank out if you're already having problems to start with as clean a slate as possible before you implement filtration on that on that system on the dispenser side you will just keep plugging filters on the dispenser otherwise and that can add up to quite a bit of expense over time and you never get back to a, a good starting point with a clean tank and that's very important with modern engines Mobile tanks have their own set of issues. Here's a fuel trailer, a fuel bowser uh, that can be hauled around a construction site or a mine or something. Here's an agricultural uh, mobile tank. This goes out and fills farm equipment out in the field. Uh, here's a uh, pickup bed uh, filter and a, with, a, with a filter on it. This is uh, built into the back of a truck. You can see the small tank there behind the between the cab and the toolbox. Very common for light duty, medium duty operations or mobile application, mobile uh, equipment operations to have to move fuel, bring fuel with you out to the site. And those tanks also need to be clean. They have an additional challenge above and beyond what the stationary tanks have. Here's our clear tank again. You can see sir, there's some dirt and some water sitting in the bottom of it. And if you go out and drive around, you stir that water and dirt up into the fuel and you almost certainly hop right out and start dispensing that fuel into equipment. And you're just going to transfer dirt and water, basically a milkshake into the piece of equipment. And then you're likely to have operability issues. Transferring that at that point without really good filtration is and, and a clean tank is, is a significant hazard to stopping uh, mobile equipment out on site if you transfer fuel in that condition. So you want to make sure that's very clean. If you stir all that material in there, it's not going to come out uh, uh, with a with a happy uh, happy uh, situation with equipment running. Very unhappy uh, operation. Uh, next is a clean diesel carts. We uh, we also sell these as a as a means to clean small tanks or vehicle tanks uh, they can circulate at about 10 to 20 gallons a minute which is enough for a very small tank to get the material in there dislodged and up in the flow picked up and brought to the filter it's important to know that you on a larger tank you, you need a much higher flow rate to actually move material around and get it to the filters just circulating the fuel up above that stuff that's settled down in the bottom isn't going to clean the tank. It will, it will just circulate that, that clean fluid that's sitting on top, and you're not going to help get the bottom of the tank scoured clean or anything. If it's a large tank, you almost certainly have to get the fuel pumped out of it, get it cleaned out, scrubbed and scoured, and clean that fuel before it goes back in the storage tank. For small tanks like this, this is a tank that had, say, 250 gallons in it. Um, or a on-vehicle tank on a on a on a modest-sized piece of uh, diesel equipment, you can get that tank cleaned out with a small cart like this. But it's not for doing a 10,000-gallon storage tank or something like that. Uh, some installation examples on small dispenser pumps. Here's a 10-gallon-a-minute dispenser pump, pretty typical on a farm tank or a light light-duty diesel application, and you have to sort of fit filtration in however you can. The, the dispense line is coming there off the meter and you got to get out past the, the nozzle there and hook the hose back on. Uh, it's a good idea to probably support that with a bracket or something if need be. 
Uh, here's a couple mounted to the both sides of a dispenser at a school bus fleet. Uh, here's a sort of a medium duty excavator company. Uh, the filters in the middle there, at the, in the middle of the photo, the two two filters on a on a dual head there at doing a high capacity and high flow uh, filtration there at about 40 gallons a minute, but this customer goes through quite a bit of fuel. They pre-filter in their fuel as it comes into their tank farm in the foreground there, but you can see they, they also filter on the outlet side. Uh, here's a small 500 gallon tank with a uh, dispenser filter on the on, on it there, and they have a breather on the on the fuel tank as well to, to prevent particulate from getting in and and uh, water build up. Here's again a couple thousand gallon tank on the left there with a particulate filter followed by a water filter, and you can see on the far end in the back there, there's a trap breather on there to prevent particulate moisture in the in the headspace of the tank. Uh, best practice all around there with the, the clean and dry kit. And the other two tanks on the on the right there both show a particle filter on the dispenser side uh, as it goes out the nozzle for filling equipment. Again, that covers the range of our our, uh, our standard kits from the little compact filter for small syst systems and the little, especially the little pickup uh, systems. The others are for, they can be used in mobile, but they're routinely on the sort of small to medium sized bulk tanks. Standard, the high capacity and higher, handle a little bit higher flow for somebody that's using a bit more fuel. Say someone using 20,000 gallons of fuel a year, that's a adequate size that should be able to handle your, your situation. Uh, and then down at the bottom, the clean and dry kit. If you have significant concerns about moisture, uh, transferring moisture out into your piece of equipment. So you've got particle removal, water removal, and a trap breather to put on the headspace to keep the tank as clean and dry as possible. And again, here is our uh, clean diesel kit selection decision tree. You have to consider the what, what problems you believe you have or you might be an ongoing issue. Um, if you have just particle removal or water removal, what kind of flow rate you're looking at, uh, handling uh, with your kit and, and the throughput through it, whether you need a high capacity kit or, a, or one of the standard single filter kits. Um, considerations for gravity, know that you're going to get very short filter life. You do have to do uh, gravity filtration there. Just understand that. It, it still may work, but you're, you're going to have uh, definitely shorter filter life than someone that can build up a lot more pressure drop across the filter with a pump. Uh, tank breathers, they come with the one kit as standard, uh, the particulate and water kit, and filter carts for cleaning small situations up or transferring and cleaning fuel. If you're pumping out of a small mobile mobile fuel container and into a piece of equipment with that cart, you'd be sure that it's clean and dry when it goes into the equipment. And then lastly, uh, some seasonal stuff. Uh, we have a line of filters for winter uh, winter operation. Winter fuel can be a little trickier to filter at high efficiency and we have a filter that still does a very good job but it handles uh, fuel that's a, at or just above its cloud point a little bit better. Once fuel hits its cloud point it turns into a huge amount of particles and it plugs pretty much any filter but there's operability issues in winter everybody knows that and, and this filter is designed to handle that a bit better. And if you'd like to uh, come visit Donaldson.com and look for the uh, My Clean Diesel and, and other webinars, they're all there on our, uh, our Donaldson.com website. So thank you very much.